This is Abakaleke, the capital city of Ebony State. Ebony State was one of the states created in 1996 by the military administration of General Sani Abacha. The present governor of the state, Dave Umayi, was first elected in 2015 on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and was re-elected in the 2019 governorship election. Under the administration of Dave Umayi, Ebony State witnessed a lot of transformation. Abakaliki, the state capital in particular, was totally transformed by the governor. <laughs> The Alex Akweme Teaching Hospital in Abakaleke, formerly known as Federal Teaching Hospital Abakaleke, got renamed after the approval of the federal government under the former Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, who gave the approval on behalf of the federal government. The chairman of the board, Alex Akweme Teaching Hospital Abakaleke, alleged to Jan Ramalam, while briefing journalists on the change of name for the teaching hospital, described the renaming as a great achievement in the next level mantra of President Muhammad Bahari. The board chairman said already the board has successfully constructed and furnished a 5,000-seater auditorium, a medical ward complex and renovated resident doctor's quarters. They have also purchased and installed 5,000 KVA generating set, an echo scan, and a blood analyzer with an enabling machine. The official commission of the project's underground breaking ceremony for the physiotherapy complex therefore attracted a lot of dignitaries which were commissioned by the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibanjo. Alex Ekweme Teaching Hospital, which started as a casualty post for treating wounded soldiers during the Second World War in the 40s, became a federal medical center in 1999. But the hospital is still not up to the required standard befitting of a federal institution. When the board under the chairmanship of Alaji to General Malan was inaugurated, they declared a state of emergency on infrastructure at Alex Equime Federal University Teaching Hospital, and this was taken over by the federal government. The board, after working round the clock, now has a success story to tell. Hence, the commission of this project by Vice President Yemi Osibanjo. As a moment of joy and excitement, as Vice President Professor Yemi Osibanjo paid a one-day walking visit to Alex Akweme Federal Teaching Hospital Abakaliki to commission some projects. Speaking at the occasion, Professor Yemi Osibanjo commended effective collaboration between President Muhammadu Buhari and a Boy State Governor David Omahi towards upgrading facilities at the Alex Akweme Federal Teaching Hospital. He observed 
that no more needed to be done to address the enormous challenges in the health sector. He noted that President Buhari has so far demonstrated much political will to actualize his next level agenda of the present administration. CMD. It is my very special pleasure and privilege to officially commission this 500 seater lecture theatre for the benefit of the teaching hospital, the students, and all of those who will use this facility at the New York Your Excellency, the Governor of the Bonnie State. The chairman, management board of the Alex Okweme Federal University Teaching Hospital Abakaliki, Alahaji Tijani Ahmed Ramalan, attributed their achievements in the hospital to the support of Mr. President and the enabling environment provided by Governor David Umahi. As the chairman of the board, uh, the board at its inaugural meeting last year declared uh, FETA 1, declared state of emergency in FETA 1, uh, because the buildings there, as uh, we all saw at that time, were, uh, uh, were constructed. They were, or rather they are fabricated uh, buildings uh, constructed in 1979, I think during the government of uh, Jim, Governor Jim Ongobodo, and those buildings have expired. And uh, today you have a lot of rodents, rats, and so on. And in order to avoid some kind of uh, disaster, the board decided to declare a state of emergency in that part of the hospital. And uh, we have uh, written to the federal government, and we are also uh, using this opportunity to request and to appeal passionately to His Excellency the Vice President as the Chairman of National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to come to the rescue uh, of this hospital by giving us a take-off grant or intervention fund in order to enable us to uh, pull down those expert structures so that we can build uh, quite a new structure to avoid any uh, epidemic. First of all, let me thank God for making today a reality. And also to thank uh, His Excellency, the Vice President, uh, Professor Yemi Osebanjo, GCOM, for coming. Yeah, we had a lot of projects we, we were to commission. Some completed, some yet to be completed. And these ones are very, very significant. We have the auditorium, 500-seater auditorium. We have the 700-seater lecture hall, even though they write 200-seater seater, uh, lecture hall. And we have the observation bay. And uh, we have uh, the unveiling of our new logo, as well as the EMR uh, through uh, electronic uh, revenue collection system. Yeah, the auditorium, we all know the importance of our uh, auditorium in an institution. A big institution like ours, a major institution, which was a product of uh, the former Peria Medical Center and the former Boys State University Hospital together. Uh, the workforce is so large, and uh, <coughs> well, not too large, 
But the workforce is such that we needed a deep place where we now organize seminars, workshops, and even conducting a promotion interview for our staff. A situation where when we are conducting promotion interview, we go to outside, we go to outside looking for big halls that can contain tablet. I think that is a thing of the past. Two, if other sister institutions or other sister institutions or other institutions that are not health related want to have any function in our hospital, they can comfortably do that. And I think you, all of you saw the auditorium, but it is the state of the art auditorium. So the significance is that we have we have where we can organize seminars that will contain a significant number of uh, staff. Two, we can also hire such places out and make money. It is a source of revenue for the hospital. The lecture hall, yes. Uh, the hospital uh, now has a memorandum of understanding with the university, such that the medical student, when they cross over, they can have lectures in that place. Not just lectures, our own staff can also have uh, seminars, workshops, and uh, because that is a 700 seat lecture hall. We have the, f uh, the ground floor and the first floor. It's very, very big, and you can see how it is well decorated. It should also be a source of money. Then the observation bay that was built by the known governmental organization, the Doctors Without Borders. Yes, what is the significance? You see this year, nobody knew that there was outbreak of Lassa fever in, in the Bonny State. Just because we have in Feta 2, where a patient that has fever, symptoms suggestive of Lassa fever, is first kept. Because before now, there was a lot of, there is usually a lot of apprehension by our staff. Because if any patient come and one says, Viral hemologic, everybody will be running, even patients. But now they have a space where they can stay. Investigation done. If they are positive, they are managed in the Lassa Fever Center. If they are negative, then they can now be managed inside the ward. So it's very, very significant because the crisis we usually have in the hospital when there is an outbreak, it is a thing of the past. The electronic medical recording, yes. What is the significance of that? The significance is that. Every star that comes to the hospital, every patient that comes to the hospital, we have the bio data and everything. Afterwards, then the doctors will see you. When they don't see you, we may not need paper. Everything will be computerized. After investigation has been ordered for, then from there they can send the information to the labs. All they needed is just to collect their blood. When the test is ready, when the result is ready, it is forwarded to the doctor to see you. So. Presently, we are starting, but in a couple of months, we'll get there. And the patient wasting, uh, waiting time will be reduced. I like it about, you go here, ask people, where is the lab, where is the x-ray section, where is the medical record, all those things will be a, a thing of the past. Above all, when patients come after treatment, you will know the actual money to pay. You will not overpay and you will not underpay. And this will help to reduce the... Uh, what is called leakages in the revenue system. Indeed, uh, I am very, very happy. Exceptionally happy because uh, there are things, so many other federal uh, institutions, many other tertiary hospitals could not do. My own home state referred to as a possibly lower state has been able to bring in number two citizens to come and commission a very ultra-modern, very wonderful project. Uh, when I inspected it uh, yesterday, before the arrival of uh, the vice president, I was uh, indeed very happy that uh, this could be in my state. So, and that was why we lend our support uh, to the chief medical director and uh, indeed the board chairman and uh, members appreciating them, supporting them for what they have done to my state. Uh, it is called Federal Teaching Hospital Bet. The beneficiaries are mainly citizens of a born state. If we do not have this edifice on ground, we will suffer. A very little issue can uh, rush a, a citizen to Enugu and uh, other states. So that is why we are here to welcome our second uh, number two citizen, our vice president, and our leader, uh, and indeed lend our support 
to our own brother and friend, uh, the chief medical director. You can see without that type of auditorium, without electronic medical record, and without physiotherapy, and the accident and the emergency that is being constructed by the a brilliant and hardworking governor of Ebony State. When these things come on stream, you are going to notice a rapid change in the type of healthcare delivery services that are being rendered by that institution. That is what we are aiming at, and it is achievable. The, the governor is the people's governor. The difference between the federal and the state government, I don't know where it is. You can, it's a hairline, you can't describe it. The governor is people's friendly. He knows that if anything can be put in place to stop people traveling abroad for treatment, they will do it. During the inauguration of the board, the chairman, al Hajjit Jan Ramalam, has stated the vision of his team to make the hospital a world medical tourism center in Nigeria. And of course, the chairman kept to his promise. The hospital, within a very short time, got a merit award of excellence as the most improved laboratory in loss of fever diagnosis. The board, however, appealed to the federal government for a takeoff grant and intervention fund to the tune of 2.8 billion naira for the full reconstruction of a section of the hospital through National Emergency Agency, NEMA. al Haji Ramalan also thanked President Muhammad Buhari for making funds available, which ensured the completion of some of these projects in the hospital.